Welcome to No Sex, Please. I'm religious. For 2,000 years and more, religion has had its own way with sex. The greatest battle it has ever faced is how to control the masses who love it. And so began the story of shame and disgust and dishonor. Forget he who must be named, but never forget it that must always be kept undercover. Can you please consider giving just 10 bucks a month, that's all, to support um, the podcast, which then supports humanity in need, um, which is trying to save lives of queer folk in East Africa, whose lives are made worse by the day by the hate preachers, the hitmen, the pulpit hitmen, who call for the death penalty against anybody who is different from them. So please look for the links um, in this podcast and uh, subscribe, but also support us either through through Patreon or through um, our Chuffed Appeal. Thank you so much. And now hopefully you'll enjoy some fun from the No Sex Please, I'm Religious podcast. Republican candidate Uh, 2024 for the presidential primaries, Wilbur Wankenstrup, uh, founder of the Purity and Culture Movement, announced he plans to introduce legislation to ban Mrs. Doubtfire and all films that feature cross-dressing of any kind if elected president of the United States of America. The following is uh, an interview that I conducted with uh, uh, w- with uh, presidential uh, um, primaries uh, candidate, uh, uh, Mr. Wankenstrop, Wilbur Wankenstrop. Um, Mr. Wankenstrop, thank you for your time today. Um, my name is uh, uh, Lisa Manley, and I work for uh, public broadcasting in America. Uh, you are running against President Trump in the primaries, yet you were a passionate supporter uh, of President Trump. Uh, yes, uh, Lisa, Lisa, let me begin by saying what a privilege it is to speak with you today. Uh, as regards President Trump, I believe he is the greatest former president this country has ever had, and I support him in that role. But surely, Mr. Wankenstrop, please call me Wanky, all my friends do. Uh, Thank you, Wanker. (coughs) During the 2016 primaries, you spoke regularly supporting his candidacy for the White House. I quote, Donald Trump is the greatest American I've ever known. He will make the greatest president we have ever seen, and he will make America great again. You were regularly seen on Fox News as well as in rallies making this statement. And you were photographed with Roger Ailes, then head of uh, Fox News, and and with Rupert Murdoch, his boss and later nemesis. Uh, That's correct, Lisa. That is correct. Why then are you not supporting his candidacy this time and in fact pitching yourself against him? Let me clarify, Lisa. Donald Trump is the greatest American I've ever known. He was the greatest president we've ever seen, and he did make America great again. He is new, um, and, and he is now the greatest former president this country has ever seen, and I don't want to take that away from him. Yes, but Wanky, I... Wanky, please. Um, I'm sorry, Wanky. Uh, let's blame autocorrect for that. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, yes. Can we move on to my platform? The evil of cross-dressing and, uh, and trans uh, sort of people in movies in Hollywood has to be stopped. I mean, it's not just people in drag reading books to children, but Hollywood has put before us such terrible characters as um, uh, Eugene Doubtfire. Um, <clears throat> Euphigenia Doubtfire, sir. Oh, well, uh, you genital Doubtfire. Well, that tells it all. Euphigenia Doubtfire. It, it was a made-up name. Um, that woman and her ilk must be stopped at any cost. The children of this country have been corrupted by drag queens uh, like her or him. Are you aware Mrs. Doubtfire movie was, where it was released in 1993 it was very popular with families? I understand that your daughter Florence, who is a teacher, was around 10 at the time, and she has said publicly that you watched that as a family with lots of laughter and enjoyment, and that you bought a video copy of it for her. 
<clears throat> I bought lots of things uh, for Flo. I don't recall that particular video. Are you pleading the Fifth Amendment? <laughs> Just trying to make sure that facts are facts. I understand you and Florence are estranged. Uh, Flo and I are going through a difficult time. It happens in the best of families. Um, she uh, she struggles with some uh, some different things, and, and I guess I'm one of them. And your first wife, her mother, are not on speaking terms? That happens with divorce. Well, you would know, sir. Your fourth wife just filed for divorce. I would rather not discuss my personal affairs. Well, are you pleading the Fifth Amendment, Wanker? <laughs> very funny again, yes. When are you going to ask me about my church attendance, which is very important, as you know? Yes, well, I know you have a good friend in Cardinal Cockburn. <clears throat> yes, uh, he is a good advisor and priest confident. Have you seen the photograph that Flo shared on Late Night Live of you this week wearing your wife's wedding gown at the family dinner and dancing with Cardinal uh, Cockburn in a lovely crim crimson number at a family barbecue? I believe that uh, was cited as one of the reasons for divorce. No, 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 that is disgraceful. Um, Cardinal uh, Coburn uh, was simply um, at, at a... Uh, a, a, a meeting in my house. It was a Democrat conspiracy that, uh, that with the photograph and so on. Uh, Trump has warned us about that many times. Uh, photographs can be deframed. Uh, the only visit of Cardinal uh, Coburn to my home offered uh, occurred at a large political dinner. Some people drank quite a bit. In fact, Flo was a child when that happened and her memory is clouded. My alcohol, sir? Of course not. She would have been 12 at the time. What about the photograph, Wacky? Uh, photographs can be modified. As I said, they can be deframed. So just, uh, just ask President Trump. He knows all about that. I'd rather not. There's a great difference between a cardinal like Cockburn, who is anti every sexual minority except his own, uh, your stance and that of a story, the Robin Williams, a famous actor, and comedian, uh, a character in the film, who only dressed as a woman because he was heartbroken at being separated from his children and created a nanny character so that he could at least see them. Are you saying that heart, that heartwarming story about family reconciliation corrupted your daughter too? No, oh, of course not, but it, but it does have an influence. Uh, you can see that. Uh, she doesn't talk to me, so maybe that's an evidence of that. Yet she says you bought her the video. The one video, I can't recall that. Your daughter runs a soup kitchen in her locality and organizes breakfast for students at her school whose families are struggling. You really think she is corrupted? I will not com comment on my daughter's good deeds. Well, if, if Mrs. Doubtfire corrupted her, it seems there are good outcomes for compassion in the community, uh, Wanker. <laughs> <clears throat> Time to plead the fifth, <laughs> oh, Wanky, don't you think? Oh, well, I had some fun. I hope you did too. Please, please remember to support us. Um, this week we have two... Um, as I as I recorded this today, we're expecting two uh, refugees to arrive in Melbourne. One of them we've been working with for quite a while and who has been managing a safe house um, in Nairobi. These guys need safe houses, the trans people, the gay people and the and the uh, lesbians and the children they they have. Sometimes they have children because of rape. I don't even know who the father is. It might have been uh, a, a tribal gang. It might have been, uh, and that's called curative rape. They they pick on a trans uh, person or a uh, lesbian, and they uh, try to cure them uh, by rape, which is a horrible, horrible thing to do. Um, <clears throat> and then you have uh, gay men who who have had to flee homes because their fathers would kill them if they didn't. Um, they've had to flee their own communities. You know, um, imagine living life in fear for years. The man we've been working with uh, is called Robert Kazozi. He's a lovely fellow. I'm going to interview him very soon. 
um, after he gets to Melbourne and he's safe. Um, but Robert has suffered enormously. He's been a refugee for six years, living in daily fear for his life and those of his community. And uh, we uh, we do what we can to help as many as we can. Just $10 a month. You know, it's not much. If you can give more, that's that's fantastic. But $10 a month, if we had a 1,000 people giving $10 a month, imagine what we could do. Uh, I, You know, I don't know what to say because I'm kind of heartbroken with all this and heartbroken um, that people in the churches um, where the gospel message is of pure love, that's what it's meant to be. Not condemnation, not judgment, but the new way that uh, <clears throat> that character Jesus um, preached about was about loving your neighbor, the person that you thought was your enemy. Please support us. I'm David Ailiff, and this is No Sex, Please. I'm religious. Please don't forget to support the podcast through Patreon, other sources, or direct to our website. This podcast supports refugees who are suffering terribly in Africa because of religious hate. It's time to show them some love.